We are looking at Madison for the third and final time. And we're coming in again from uh, up in the air. We're going to come down to the very middle of town, the crossroads that uh, forms Madison. You remember once upon a time, Madison was called a crossroads, McDowell's Crossroads. And as you come down to the crossroads, you see the buildings. Right at this crossroads, there was a building here, and it's gone now. It was called Phase Inn. And over here, this corner here now is empty. This building that uh, is here now, this is gone. And the fellow who built this building built a barn over here. <clears throat> Although this building is gone, the barn is still here. And it's been changed into a rather interesting use. This building was built in 1797. And the barn was built maybe about 1799. Now we're going to get out on the ground and take a look at things. We'll use our little guy here. We're looking more or less north or northeast up 136. That's Main Street in Madison. We go up Madison Heights Road. This is the house that's gone now, no longer here. Built 1797. And we go up here just a bit more. We see this street is going to take us to a place. It's called the barn. It's called the barn at Madison. And there's a uh, place back there now. You can see part of it here, just the front of it. And what we're going to do is we're going to switch to uh, some still pictures. It'll help you get a better image of the barn. We have before us a map of Madison. In 1876, we're coming right into the crossroads where Madison began. We're going to see this building here. This was an early inn called Fay Inn, F-A-Y-E. And we'll take a look at that building. It served as an inn and a hotel for a good many years and then became a store before it was used as apartments. And uh, it has been torn down. And diagonally across from that, over on this corner, there was another rather large, impressive building in Madison. It was built by Matthias Ringel about 1797. J.R. Kinty then later bought it. Matthias Ringel also built this barn over here, which we'll take a look at. But next we'll see the house he had built. That's the house. And I can't help looking at that roof without thinking, that looks a lot later than 1797, but who am I to say? Maybe somebody knows the story of that. Now next we go to the barn that Matthias Ringel built about 1799. Well, that's a bit different. This is an example of adaptive reuse, an old barn that's been converted into a place to have weddings. A rather nice wedding venue. A 
place where you can uh, have pictures taken in a nice environment and you can have memories of having been married in a nice place in a very out of the way environment which is not given to the clatter and hubbub of the city. A lot of greenery. And memories of a nice event. And that is an old barn, hard to think of that. Uh, these recall memories of the good times, festive days in Madison, more pleasant special days. And we're also, what we're going to see next will, things, will be things that recall workadays. Uh, we'll take a look at mining, the mines around Madison. Madison itself is not a uh, mining town. That is, it really didn't derive its being from the mines like a lot of towns around there did. But I want to show you this mapping from uh, 1867. Here, here we have Madison. And look right over here. You see that symbol? That symbol. That indicates there was a mine right there beside Madison that early, 1867. Now when you look at a map that was 10 years older, 1857, there's no map there. So somewhere between 1857 and 1867, Madison got a mine. And also note the fact that this, this road is not here anymore. It, it's been... Uh, removed. A lot of things change in the course of time. This is something I want to call your attention to that on the old maps, a mine entrance, a drift entrance, or a slope entrance will be indicated by one of these. And if it's a shaft entrance, it'll show it as an upside down one. And that's the older mapping, like going back 1860s, 70s, and so on. But when you get to the more contemporary mapping, like the topo that I'll show you, the mine entrances on that, on those maps, will be like this. I'll show you what I mean. That's a topo. We can see Madison, and we're going to make it bigger. See, this is Madison. And this is uh, Mill Street coming out, Brownstown Road coming down. And if you look closely, you can see one, two, three, four, five of those symbols for, the, uh, for a mine entrance. You have to look closely at topo maps. They have a lot of information, but it's kind of piled on there, so you've got to be careful where you miss it. Now, what I'll, go, I'll do, I'll show you where they were on Google Earth. This, this is the area right along Brownstown Road. There were, there were mines once upon a time in here. But they weren't a big deal. What you can tell, how you can tell about the mines, whether they're a big and significant factor, is whether they had a railroad. These had no railroad. That is what we know. But they were more or less small backcountry kind of mines, not uh, the big impressive hunks of steel that you'd see on the larger mines with a railroad. And you would see guys like this working there with a bunch of mules that were used to haul coal in and out. And then the railroads came. Here is Madison. And up here is the little Sewickley shown in blue, the stream. And along that valley, the Hemfield branch coming out of Greensburg was built. And that allowed things like Dara and Arona Hermony out here, and Madison Station. Uh, it was referred to as Madison Station, causing a bit of confusion. So if you hear Madison Station, they're talking about what's up here, about a mile and a third north of uh, the town of Madison itself. 
So here's Madison on the road, and up here is Madison on the railroad. Not the same thing. Causing a little bit of confusion. And we uh, show you there was a siding came down here in what was called Poverty Hollow. This is the closest that the railroad mines came to Madison itself. This was a little Keystone Coal patch town here. And it was uh, something that came and has come and gone in the 1920s. It was wiped out. And maybe we'll have time to show you just a little bit of Dara up here. This is the 136 coming out from Greensburg. And Dara up here above Madison. Down here at 136 going up and then turns right at Dara. A lot of what was out at Dara is missing. A lot of the mine houses, the company houses that were up in this area have been torn down or burned down. This area down here still has the uh, double company houses. This was a company store. This building right across the street was the uh, office of Keystone Coal and Coke. And we're going to go down on the ground for a minute here. Just hold on. Don't get dizzy. This large building was once the company store. And in this little grove of sheltered by trees is the building that was the uh, office of Keystone Coal and Coke. It's actually a very domestic looking structure. It was probably built as a house. And we're coming into what was likely the center of the town of Dara. We're making the turn onto uh, 136 going east and you can see the, these are the double houses built for two families and we go up the road past the houses and you see the church up there in the distance and you see they're not all in great shape but these were from the times when the mine was operating and the road went up here to uh, where some more of the company houses were, but are there no more. And there's still the little church there reminding us of the days when uh, things in Darrow were a lot more busy and things were happening when the mine was operating. And that'll be about it. I'll just make one reminder that Darrow was founded with the name New Madison, but the name didn't stick because the United States Post Office didn't like that, so they had to change it to uh, Dara for reasons I do not know. So that's it for Madison, and we'll see you again for another trip to another place.